Hi muckers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all having the best day ever. Thank you so much for clicking on my YouTube channel today. I really appreciate you being here and I appreciate your time. You have a lot of YouTubers that you're probably subscribed to who are uploading a lot of content. So I'm really grateful that you decided to spend a little portion of your day with me and hang out. So if you have any feedback on what we're gonna talk about today, which I'm pretty sure you will, make sure to have it below and I'll get back to you and talk amongst yourselves. I'm just the teacher here, y'all are the students. It's actually the other way about, I'm the student, y'all are the teachers. <laughs> but yes, I'm super excited for today's video. We are going to be talking about the fact that Keemstar retired and is now not retiring, which is so predictable and is exactly what I said in my video about him retiring that he was never going to do it because someone like Keemstar will never go away from the attention. And that's not a drag because Keemstar, you're looking at someone who's the exact same. Look at my fucking shirt. Bitch, this is me 24-7. No, honestly, in the video where he announced his retirement, I made a live stream on it and I was talking about it on Instagram and Twitter and my initial thoughts whenever everyone was freaking out, it was trending on Twitter. People were like, oh my god, we've got rid of Keemstar and Keemstar's finally going and all this from the people that don't like Keemstar and then the other side of Twitter and the other side of YouTube were like, no, Keemstar's going, blah, blah, blah. And my response whenever, oh, who's texting me? Oh, whoops, my friend Kat. Whenever people were asking me what my opinion was on it, I stayed pretty consistent in the fact that I was like, yeah, he's not gonna leave. Because in his retirement video, he literally states that he was going to retire on his 40th birthday in March. And I was like, all right, yeah, if he was going to retire, he would have retired then and there. He wouldn't be announcing the announcement for his retirement. It doesn't work like that. What I genuinely in the moment and still believe is the fact that at the specific time in which he announced his retirement, which he uploaded a video on the 26th of October, 2021 called Retired. And he talks about the fact that you know, there's not many people getting involved in drama these days and he doesn't feel like he can have his opinion. We're going to watch a portion of it and then go to what his new tweet is, that he's not retiring and the reason for that. And again, why I think that's a bit... Mm. But anyway, whenever he announced that, I said in the moment, and I'll say it again, that there wasn't much drama happening. October was really boring on YouTube. Nothing was happening. Listen, in the nature of what we do, you as the audience member and maybe the content creator that you watch who covers commentary, drama, maybe a journalist you follow on Twitter, whatever. Maybe if you're just on like Reddit or Discord, there wasn't much happening in September and October on YouTube. And whenever that happens, some people have different responses. Some YouTubers take breaks. Some YouTubers will maybe talk about things that have happened and go revisit them. Or some YouTubers will literally start crumbling. And again, in the most respectful way, it seemed like Keemstar made this video because there was weeks upon weeks of no drama and it seemed like an effort to get views back on his channel. And I mean, he did it successfully. There was a lot of traction that came to his name and his channel because he announced that he retired. Heck, even H3 was talking about it as well, obviously. And it was a news story then that Keemstar was retiring. And again, I didn't believe he was going to retire because who announces a retirement months and months in advance? And he said the reason for him announcing it months and months in advance was because he needs to find a replacement host for the drama alert. So he was actively looking for someone. And again, that's something you can do behind the scenes. You know enough people, you don't have to do an open calling cast call. So again, I just thought it was a, a reason for him to get attention and a reason for him to get views on a month where the CPM on YouTube is pretty good. October, November, December, you make, you know, more decent money in those months than you would January, February, March on YouTube. There wasn't much happening. He got views, he got the money. And I think at the end of the day, that's what it was. So on this video, retirement, this is the reason that he says for his retirement. And then we're going to get to his tweet that he literally put up like an hour ago with the reason he's not retiring. And we'll talk about it. Everybody, all right. Right. This is all YouTubers. This is all influencers. Well, most of them. Uh, so what happens is when nobody speaks their mind and everyone's a commercial, uh, there's not really that much entertainment, you know, entertainment. In entertainment, uh, you need drama. Like, so again, one of the things that I talked about back then was that he says his reason for retiring is that there's not drama anymore. But then he uses this video to say that he's keeping drama alert with a new host. Surely you would discontinue drama alert if there's no drama. No, it was just a ploy to get attention. And again, I'm not saying that as a negative thing. People do it all the time in the entertainment field. You know, it was just predictable. Avengers without drama. Think of the Avengers without a bad guy, right? You need some back and forth, you need some battles, you need, you need, you need conflict, right? That's a core part of entertainment. Not all entertainment, but 
in general, entertainment. And that just doesn't happen anymore with uh, the cancel culture stuff, with the ripping sponsors away and attacking a YouTuber's sponsor. It used to be this huge no-no. If you did that, like, you were the one that got canceled. Now it's acceptable. Now it's like normal thing. Like if someone gets in trouble, let's email the sponsor. Like that's a normal thing. I don't know how that happened. I mean, it threatens the entire entertainment. You know? And by the way, this was in reference to people coming for, I think it was Chipotle who were sponsoring uh, James Charles right after sponsoring David Dobrik. Now again, a lot of mixed opinions on the David Dobrik cancellation, right? But with the James Charles one, I think if you're on the side of supporting James Charles, you're in the complete wrong one. And I don't even think Keemstar is on the side of James Charles. I don't think he's ever been. But the thing was, he's making a big issue of people coming for sponsors. I agree with that in the grand scheme of things. But when people were actively coming for brands sponsoring James Charles in the peak of him literally confirming that he was messaging multiple underage boys, I don't think it's a problem. Why is someone calling my phone? Hold on, let me accept. I literally don't get calls. Hi. Hiya, I've got your message on my other phone. Pardon? I've got a message regarding the puppy on my other phone. Oh, sorry, that that wasn't, um, I think this is the wrong number. I'm really sorry. Oh no, you're fine, have a great night. You too. Good Thank night. you so much. A bit of puppy. I don't need any more puppies. <laughs> Fuck me. Is it a sign from God? Anyways, so with that being said, I don't think it was a problem that people were trying to come for James Charles as sponsors whenever he had just made the video addressing the two boys whenever there were multiple ones coming out. Listen, I don't care if that's an unpopular opinion because it's my opinion on that. I don't see a problem with that. Whenever maybe there's just a disagreement between YouTubers you know, and then people are coming for the sponsors on the other fans to them fans whenever there's just like disagreements happening. I completely understand that argument. But whenever it was literally these big mainstream, mainly companies that are catering towards children doing sponsorships on James Charles's profile, I don't care to double down on my opinion that it was wrong. And I don't understand why Keemstar is doing that as well whenever he's covered many stories with different P words. Anyways, you know, community or whatever that we've built here. And that's another thing. Back in the day, you know, when we talked about the community, felt like we knew everyone. Like it was a, it was a, it was an actual community. The community doesn't exist anymore. It's like so big and so spread. You know, I, I think back of uh, stories. Uh, what was the name of those guys? The, these guys, I'll find it in editing. Remember they got canceled or something. Everybody talked about it. everybody. Now a story will happen and only that group of fans or care about that story. You know, we're not knit together like we used to be. And part of the problem. And now he goes on to talk about drama channels, but it's like, he's literally preaching here that he's upset that people aren't more involved in cancel culture. But then he's like, cancel culture is a problem. He literally just said there now about an issue on people not all coming together to like, talk about an event that happens, isn't that literally cancel culture? Isn't that literally whether they're canceling them or not, mass people coming together to talk negatively about something? So I don't understand that point as well. Again, actually, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> is we don't have a, a, a flourishing commentary community, right? We used to have a commentary community where everybody was talking about the same thing and that commentary community has disappeared and they're all making long form like documentaries because the longer videos, the more watch time, the more they'll get promoted and the algorithm and blah, 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 blah. So you're left with uh, the T channels and the T channels have no credibility. Caught lying and bullying and harassing uh, YouTubers. Uh all right, and that's what it boils down to at the end of the day, an excuse to talk about drama channels again. Of course, of course, staying consistent, staying very consistent. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like he just made this video to raise an issue about T-Channels even more so that they could get even more harassment. But again, the T-Channels can take it. The T-Channels can take it. For some reason, why are the commentary ones the ones that can't take it? But the T-Channels take all the harassment from all the commentary bros and they don't give a fuck. Most of my friends within the space do literally will just take it. I can just take it. it. It's fine. Oh my gosh. Like, there is a divide being made always between commentary bros and drama channels. 
And it's, what, is that just about the drama channels are mostly female slash gay men? Again, I'm not going to raise that issue any further than that because I, I don't care to. But that's literally what it boils down to. Drama channels is mainly now being used as a way to talk about females within the space and also gay men. And commentary ones are, are the ones who sit down with their beer and their microphones and their webcams. Like... Uh, non-stop. It's not a bad thing that there's more people in the space now. It actually adds more diverse opinions. That That's my opinion. And again, I respect that he can have his own opinion on this completely, regardless of who would be sitting down in front of me talking here. I'm openly hearing what they have to say, and I'm willing to, if he believes that this divide and it's wrong because of this now and there's not many, listen, the same way that I would hope that he would respect what I had to say, listen, I'm listening. I just think... It's hypocritical, and then to announce the retirement because of this, and then now you'd be like, oh, I'm not retiring. There's so many of them that they kind of control the narrative. It's just a mess. It's a giant mess, all right? It's just a, a giant mess of not fun. I think back of the time where there were diss tracks, right? People were making diss tracks back and forth. That was fun. Team Star, I was quite cringy. We don't have that anymore. You know, if I go back and We're grown. I look at, um, you know, we have drum or DM where you guys can tip us off on news. And we look through that and it's like, you're trying to me too every single YouTuber for something, right? And a lot of them are guilty, need to be called out. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but like, that's the only thing anyone cares about anymore. It's like, there's no... <sighs> that's the only thing people care about. Is that just a case that you don't want to talk about SA stories? Keemstar... SA stories covering them between any drama channel, commentary channel, or whatever. Sorry, hold on. Um, Gomez is playing with a pack of sponges, and I don't know where the fuck he got them. Listen, I can promise you that most of the people who cover SA stories on YouTube and the R word stories, it's not necessarily ever a pleasant conversation to have, but it's an important one that needs to be had because these are the top, top YouTubers at the top of the platform. All of our videos on this, anyway, get demonetized. Literally no one within the space makes any money off of this. We're speaking about it because we literally care about the fact that these are the biggest YouTubers on the platform committing these crimes. So we don't see an issue with having to cover these. And again, with changing times, yes, at the time whenever you loved the commentary space and it was so great, all those YouTubers were committing those things. They just weren't being talked about. Now they're being talked about. It comes in waves. The stories are now at the forefront and we're talking about them. I just don't see how this is an issue. Where is the fun, you know? There's not much fun left in, in, in the community from the perspective of drama. It's always something to pull on the emotions of the audience, of the viewers, get them emotionally angry so they form a mob and then use them to attack someone. Like, that's what I see these other YouTubers doing nonstop. And um, it's sad, it's pathetic, it's not fun. Another thing. Life's not fun. Because I've been a YouTuber for such a long time is, you know, back in the day, all right, I had a fan base that subscribed to my channel and they would go to their sub box and be like, oh, a drama or video and go watch it, right? But then YouTube changed some things, right? They uh, said, well, you gotta turn the bell on, right? You gotta turn this- This is giving Gabby Hanna. If you want notifications for the channel. Oh, okay. All right, so we started telling people to turn the notifications on. Then they added another layer. Well, if you want all notifications, you gotta select the all button. Uh, okay, YouTube, all right, all right. So that was their third, you know, stage or whatever of trying to separate the creator from their fan base, right? Make the fans go through three, so you gotta sub, you gotta turn the bell, and you gotta select always, right? Then they started pushing recommendants, all right? Now, when I go to youtube.com, I get recommended videos that I want to actually see. And you know, I think the recommended thing is awesome, right? I use it all the time. The problem is, all right, the people I sub to, the, the, the people that I made a, you know, a, a decision, a conscious decision in my head, I want to watch this person. I don't see their videos anymore. All right, we're ending at that and then we'll get to his tweet. I think that's a great point. I 100%, while it does give off Gabby Hanna, and I feel like Gabby Hanna every time I complain about it, what he's saying there about YouTube is a fantastic point. It's a fantastic point, and I agree with him. 
YouTube really do make it harder for the viewer to be able to enjoy and watch and see and be updated on the creator that they actively choose to subscribe to because YouTube are, you know, pushing out different kind of videos that'll make them more so money. And if their favorite creator isn't making that kind of content, you really won't see it. You have to go through many different layers. I completely agree with them on that point. I think that's a fabulous point. I really, really, really do. Now, let's get to his tweet. So he tweeted out today, I'm not retiring on March 8th, 2022. So further on in his video, he says that he's going to retire on his 40th birthday and hand over drama alert. Well, he's still going to be drama alert, but someone else is going to be the host. And I know they've tried out different hosts here and there. Um, and I don't necessarily know the opinions that the audience had on that. I really wasn't watching them. I know that there has been other hosts though. Um, I'd be intrigued to look further into that to see how they've been doing. Um, but I do think the drama alert is Keemstar. You know what I mean? It, I, don't, I don't look at Drama Alert as a company. I look at Drama Alert as Keemstar giving the drama. And regardless of my opinion on Keemstar, I feel like he does a great delivery of it. He's engaging, he's energetic, he's charismatic. And I don't think that anyone else would really be able to fit into that, which is why, again, I never thought he was going to retire. And I always thought it was just to get attention because no one can fit Drama, or drama Alert's shoes. Because Drama Alert is Keemstar. It's not Drama Alert, you know, hosted by Keemstar, but someone else does it. No. I'm not retiring on March 8th. I want to, but hashtag Drama Alert is not ready for me to leave yet. I have to expand the company much bigger before I leave. $20 million for my company is a joke. It's worth more. I'll just have to prove it. So... Again, I would never have said that Drama Alert was worth 20 million. I wouldn't have said that any YouTube channel was worth 20 million, but I don't necessarily know where he's getting with that. I genuinely, that's my opinion. Um, I just think this is, even if he was planning on retiring, they're not going to find a host that's going to fill the shoes of Keemstar. Regardless of your opinion on Keemstar, no one will come on and do it like Keemstar. I don't think people would allow themselves to. I, I don't think so. So I think he's going to have trouble doing that. And again, he's never going to leave because of that. And again, do I think it's an issue that he's not going to leave? No, I just don't care for something being announced and, and knowing in the moment that it's not going to happen. And then fast forward to now and it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? That's just where I'm coming from with this. But I want to know your opinion. We'll talk about it below. I really appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so, so much. And I hope you're all doing well. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.